Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Mavlios, and I'm Senior Director of Product Marketing here at Datasite. We'd like to thank you in advance for attending our Industrials Leadership Series, featuring Siobhan Sweeney Cordova, Executive Vice President and Head of Global M&A at American Industrial Acquisition Corporation. As we all know, the global crisis has had a devastating impact on industries and businesses worldwide. No two industries or regions are alike, and they're all experiencing the impact of the crisis in different ways. As a result, businesses will need to tailor their financing and restructuring strategies to fit their unique industry and regional challenges. As part of our latest data site thought leadership series, Navigating the Storm, we are conducting a series of short interviews with industry experts to help dealmakers think through the storms ahead and get some practical advice on how to start preparing their businesses and clients for the restructuring wave that's about to hit. With that, I'd like to introduce to you Siobhan to talk about the industrial sector. Siobhan, obviously industrials is in the eye of the storm when it comes to the current global crisis. With disruptions, supply chains, plants closing down, concerns about demand, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. From your perspective, how has the industrial sector responded to the recent market events and volatility? Could have been faster. Corona was in the media since January. But in Europe, until the end of January, but no one really paid attention to it. So automakers like General Motors, Ford, and SEAT have retooled plants to build ventilators. Uh, GM partnered up with a company called Ventec, which is a ventilator specialist to accelerate production by using the car maker's plant in Indiana. SEAT, the Spanish unit of Volkswagen outside of Barcelona, located in Spain, is manufacturing a respirator assisted with motor and adapted by the windshield wipers. So the whole line where they manufacture one of their car brands called the Leon, which is Spanish for lion, was converted to produce these respirators. And in one week, record time, they were able to do this new installation. And each respirator has about more than 80 electronic components and mechanics, and it passes through an exhaustive quality control with, you know, ultraviolet ray sterilization. And from what I hear, you know, I did a, they did like a total of 13 prototypes in just one week in order to get the final model. So, you know, thanks for the team of 150 employees of different parts of the company. Uh, their motivation is to manufacture a piece of equipment that's going to save lives. Yeah, that's really interesting how um, certain companies are learning to adapt in this environment and pretty impressive at the speed which you're moving. Um, what sort of challenges do you foresee in the short term for M&A? M&A is experiencing a general freeze. So transactions are being deferred or aborted because in many cases, the company's outlook has deteriorated or is uncertain or simply because it's impossible to perform on-site due diligence because of the lockdown nationwide. So people are operating from their homes and they can't drive or fly to inspect different companies, manufacturing plants and to meet management teams. So in many cases, uh, there's preparation taking place where investment banking firms are putting together teasers and information memoranda, pitch books, and now videos of manufacturing plants. But the actual process of actions has decelerated dramatically. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And um, within industrials, I guess, are there certain subsectors that you would expect to be the most resilient? coming out of this time? Yes. Uh, pharmaceuticals is a good space. Uh, medical equipment is a good space. If you're making defense-related parts or equipment or products, you're fine. You're doing well. If you're in the food and beverage business, you're doing well because people are still eating and drinking, right? But... <laughs> <laughs> if you're selling to supermarkets and grocery stores, then you're doing really well. Uh, if you're involved in the manufacturing of corrugated cartons or paper for corrugated cartons, 
which are cardboard cartons, you're doing very well. You know, there are very few companies that are better positioned than Amazon to flourish in this crisis. So as customers are increasingly relying on deliveries from the everything store, as we're currently in the age of government lockdowns, uh, so the answer is why this corrugated card is so resilient is because this premium company called Amazon is shipping with these cardboard cartons every day. Yeah, and a lot of us are getting them too. Um, <laughs> and so within industrials, I guess, which subsectors do you think will be the hardest hit and, and why? Have to say automotive, truck, rail, motorcycles, and anything Boeing related. Yeah. Anything, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything where the end customer is shut down. So yeah. that means all of the companies that serve OEMs, so original equipment manufacturers, that have shut down, such as Boeing and most of the automotive manufacturers, as well as a lot of oil and gas exploration and development companies. So if you're serving the automotive sector or the truck sector or the motorcycle sector or the rail sector, you're not doing well. If you're yeah. serving, yeah. If you're serving the oil and gas sector, you're not doing well. Why? Because the price of oil is very, very low and it's crippling oil and gas companies right now. And if you service restaurants with food and beverages, then you're not doing well because restaurants are primarily closed unless they're still open for a delivery only basis. Yeah. And so with that said, um, have you seen any divestitures or restructuring activity pick up? Uh, if, it ha if you haven't already, I guess, when do you guess that will happen? No, uh, we haven't seen it, de you know, we've seen it decelerate, but we've seen it slow down and I don't think it'll pick up until there's a light at the end of the tunnel, meaning a slowdown in COVID-19 cases and new daily deaths in the U.S. and Europe. Gotcha. Um, in the event that, that companies do need to think about restructuring, um, you know, what sort of strategic questions should they be asking themselves? Uh, the questions are going to be, what's the burn rate? Yeah. Cash, cash, cash. You mm -hmm. know, how much cash is required to continue to own the company? How can I produce my cash and still maintain the company as a going concern? Uh, how can I hibernate the company so that the company still exists even though all the employees are at home? Mm -hmm. How can I obtain support from our banks and from the government to do this? You know, those are the key issues. Gotcha. And are there any pros and cons that come to mind in terms of if a company does need to go through a restructuring cycle, um, you know, what they might want to be thinking about? There are no cons for restructuring. You hmm. know, restructuring needs to be con constant. You know, it has to be a constant activity. If you're not restructuring or at least thinking about restructuring, then you're effectively resigning yourself to a stagnant company that's going nowhere. Hmm. You know, then you're not improving your company. So restructuring means improvement. There yeah. are no cons to restructuring. Uh, you must improve. Period. Yeah, no, that's uh, that makes sense. Um, and so moving forward, um, any sort of practical advice for uh, the industrial sector as we kind of continue to be 
uh, within you know this difficult market environment, and um, you know as we kind of proceed into the next few weeks and months. Sure. As one of our operational partners and mentor at the AIC Group once said to me, "This too will pass." Um, if you need to get something done, there are companies out there that are ready, willing, and able to help you. You know, you know turnaround managers that are excited, skilled, and capable of protecting and defending your company. And if you need money, or you need management, there are companies available that can help. And we're one of them. You know, we continue to look for deals and continue to buy companies, even in this environment. You know, we're currently buying turnarounds and we're also buying what's called resurrections meaning companies that have stopped. We are also buying hibernations. These are companies that have temporarily stopped. We are in the market every day looking for such opportunities. Great, well, it seems like you're still very active, so that's, that's very positive. Um, well, yeah, so yeah. thank you in advance for your participation today. Uh, it's great to hear you know, from leaders like yourself in the space, um, especially as we continue through these uncertain times. Um, so yeah, so thank you and thank all for listening. Uh, have a great day.